What's going on guys, John Elder here from Kodobi.com and in this video we're going to do undo, a redo, and a horizontal scroll bar for a text editor with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video we're going to do undo, redo, and a scroll bar on the bottom. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to that channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, that's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. Alright, it is Friday morning here in Vegas, I'm very excited about the weekend, man it was a long week I tell you. <laughs> in this video we're going to do undo and redo, and we're also going to set this horizontal scroll bar down here. You know, earlier we did this vertical scroll bar, but uh, you know you might want to scroll this way as well, or you might not, and we'll talk about that. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. First though, uh, in the last video we did these uh, cut, copy, and paste things, and this little control X text here, I was having trouble actually getting him lined up on the right side, and I completely forgot there's a thing in there that somebody pointed out in the comments that you can use called the accelerator, and so uh, we'll look at that. And I'll just show you right now, if we head over to our code, here is our cut, copy stuff. We just add right after our lambdas, just accelerator equal and whatever, and that'll bop that over. I also gave paste a little bit of space uh, just to add a little bit of space to the whole thing, and uh, you can do that or not. So, okay, starting off, let's do undo and redo. And we've talked about this for text widgets in the past. It's actually really, really easy to do this. That's why we're going to also do the scroll bar in this video, because just doing the undo and redo thing is going to take like a minute and a half. It's really not that complicated. And so, if you're not familiar what I'm talking about by undo and redo, you know, if you like, for instance, delete something and you want to bring it back, uh, you can, uh, you know, come up here and hit the redo button or control Y or control Z, one of the two, whoops, to, uh, to bring it back. So that's what we're going to be doing. So, all right, let's head over here to our code. And the first thing you want to make sure of is that the text box itself will allow undo and redo. And it doesn't by default. So we need to head over to our text box. Here it is, my text. And let's see, let's scroll through here. Yeah, we've already said it here when we when we first defined this thing. Undo equals true. So if you want this ability in your text box, you have to make sure this says undo true. Like I said, we've already done this, so we don't have to change it. But make sure if you didn't put that in there, that you have put it in there now. So now we could just head down here. And I also put a separator, so edit underscore menu dot add separator to the menu bar itself. So there's a little bar between the uh, cut, copy, and paste and the undo and the redo. So, okay, so to use these, all we have to do is set a command and set that equal to my underscore text dot edit underscore undo. And that's it. So we could just copy this and paste it into redo. And instead of edit underscore undo, this is edit underscore redo. And while we're thinking about it, let's put these accelerators in here. So let me just copy this one. So after this, we could just paste this and this. Now I believe usually undo is Z and Y is usually redo. And we actually don't have to do any binding for this. Like with up here, in the last video, we did binding stuff for these control X, control C. And when I say this, I mean I'm holding the control button and hitting the Z key on your keyboard at the same time. That's what this control plus thing means. And like I said, we don't have to do bindings for this because the Kinter text widget has these already operate, they already operate. So we can test them out in a second just to make sure, but Really, this is all we have to do. So let's go ahead and save this. And we're saving this as textpad.py as always. So let's go Python textpad.py. And if we want, we can open a file. So we can come up here and delete membership. And then if I want to undo that, I can click undo and it pops it back up. If I want to redo it, I hit boom and it disappears again. Uh, I can try it again. So let's, let's get rid of this 30. Now if on my keyboard, if I hit Control Z, it pops back up. If I hit Control Y, it pops, it, it undoes it again. So undo Control, or redo Control Y, undo Control Z, and that works. So 
that's all there is to that. It's really that simple. And it's one of the sort of the nice things about the text widget. That's really cool. So that's undo redo. Now, let's talk about this horizontal scroll bar. So we already have a vertical one. So if we come down here, and we have some space, we've got this scroll bar, but we don't have one for horizontal down here. Now check this out. I'm just going to hold down the P key. And when I get to the end, whoops, it word wraps, and it comes back down. Now, you may want that. If that's what you want, you don't have to do any of this stuff that we're about to do. But if you want this to keep scrolling that way, or that way, I guess, uh, we need to make some changes, and we can add a scroll bar to deal with that. So first, let's head back over to our code, and let's head up to our text box itself. So we need to set a, an attribute here. So here's our text box, my text. So if we come to the end of this, we can set the wrap to none. Because right now, it's, it's wrapping the text. When it gets to the end, it wraps it to the next line. So your options here are none, word, and I think car for character. So we want none. So let's go ahead and just save this. And if we head back over here and run this guy. So now if we hold a key and scroll, scroll, scroll all the way to the end, now I'm going to switch it up to D. You can see it's scrolling that way, or that way, whichever way. And but there's no scroll bar below here. So this is not great. We can use our arrow keys and our home key and our end key to sort of navigate this here. But that's not really what you want. What we want is a, uh, a scroll bar down here. So can we have a scroll bar vertically and horizontal at the same time? Yes, we can. So it's pretty simple. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. So let's, let's see, go to our scroll bar here. Let's see, where do we define our scroll bar? Right here. And let's go uh, horizontal scroll bar. And let's call this, I don't know, horizontal scroll. And this is going to be a scroll bar. And we want to put it in my underscore frame. Now we also need to set the orientation right here where, where we define it. By default, the orientation is vertical. So we don't have to, for instance, right here, we didn't have to set the orientation because vertical is the default. But here we want it to go horizontal, so we need to change the orientation. So we could just go orient equals and then set that equal to horizontal like that. Okay, so then we need to pack this guy. So let's go whore underscore scroll and dot pack. And what side do we want this on? We want it on bottom, right? And we want the fill to equal x. For this one, it went y, that's up and down. This one we want left to right, that's x. So we want it to fill the whole of our text box widget thing. So, okay, that's good. Now we need to assign that to our text box. So let's come down to our text box. And you can see, for the last one, we did y scroll command, and we set it at text scroll dot set. We need to do the same thing, but for an x scroll command. So we could just go x scroll command, equals uh, that horizontal scroll we just created, dot set. Okay, and then down here, when we configure our scroll bar, we can just go whore underscore scroll, dot config, and set the command equal to my underscore text dot x view. You see in the last one, we did the y view, which is y is vertical. It's the vertical axis. X is the horizontal axis, so we set the X view here. Just like in the text box, we set the X scroll command. And just like up here, we filled X, right? So that's really the difference. You change all the X's to Y's, basically, and you set your orientation when you define it, and that should work. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. And right off the bat, our scroll bar or our status bar is kind of getting pushed off the page. So let's fix that real quick before we go any further. So let's come up to the top and let's give our app a little bit more width. So instead of 660, let's go, I don't know, 680. And I think I also want to come down here to the status bar itself. And we're at iPad Y of five. Maybe we'll change this to 15, give it some more padding. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it, see how that looks probably a little better. And okay, so this has a little more spacing here. That looks good. Size is good. All right, so if we open a file, or I guess we don't really have to. And if we, let me just copy this and start pasting. Paste, 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 paste. All right, so we have a scroll bar here. 
If we then give this more space, we still have the scroll bar here, that works. Now notice this, here's the text that goes off the screen, right? And the scroll bar appears, right? But if you scroll down, now watch this text, as soon as it leaves the screen, boop, our scroll bar down here kind of disappears. I mean, the outline of it is still here, but the active scrolling bar is gone. So that's kind of an interesting thing about Kinter, right? And if you scroll back up it, in a spot where we can scroll, it appears again. So that's kind of neat. <laughs> so I think we are done for Friday. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeme.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and a PDF of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeme.com, and I'll see you in the next video.